Today on Judge Faith, a couple that can't call it quits come to court about a car pushed off a cliff. I had squeaky brakes. I'm laying in bed. I hear. I go outside and I see a tail end of my car drive away. She called me about 10 o'clock saying, do I know where her car's at? I have couples trackers. It tells you all the phone calls, all the text messages, and the GPS location. Did you track him the day your car went over the cliff? I tracked him 24-7 as long as my eyes were open. Yeah. So you're not only the baby's mother, you're CSI. <laughs> Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Desiree Lutzweiler says her ex-boyfriend and father of her unborn baby drove her car off a cliff in order to win her back. She's suing for the value of a car, new tires, gas, and towing fees. Defendant Raymond Vandenberg says he owes nothing because his ex is just trying to get money from him, and she has no proof he took her car. He's counted suing for the return of money from an account. All rise. Court is in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Please be seated. Your Honor, the litigants have been sworn in. This is the case of Lutz Weiler versus Vandenberg. Thank you, Juan. Desiree Lutz Weiler? Yes, Your Honor. You are suing the defendant Raymond Vandenberg? Yes for $2,315 for the value of a car you say he damaged, in addition to new tires, gas, and towing fees? Correct. And you are countersuing, sir, for $800 for money you say the plaintiff took out of uh, an account that you own? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. We'll start with you, Ms. Luz Wild. Tell me what's going on here. I met the defendant in 2013, and um, I showed up at his house, and actually, I, <laughs> with his son, and um, I never left. I really liked it over there, and I liked Raymond a lot. Um, I don't know if Raymond ever liked me. Um, I stuck around to find out, and I uh, moved from the couch to his room. You know, about a week later, he got kind of curious why I was in his room. Uh, <laughs> I think eventually he found out. And um, so we were together about a year and a half. Um, we had a one-year-old son together. You have a one-year-old now? We do. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually four and a half months pregnant now. With his child? Correct. OK. Um, there had always been some other women around. Um, like, for instance, one time, uh, his ex, who had got out of jail, I guess, came by, and she was going, Raymond, tell me who she is. What is she doing here? And Raymond just went on about his day as if he didn't <laughs> see her. I mean, <laughs> ate his oatmeal, fed the dogs, brr, mowed the lawn. I mean, he did all that. And, you know, she would come over maybe for about three weeks. She came over for a couple hours at a time, say, Raymond, who is she? What is she doing here? And he didn't want to tell her. I didn't I'm want sorry, to tell I'm her. <laughs> Let me ask you a, a question here. <laughs> she was a friend of, of your son's at the time, sir? That's, that's, yes, you met she her? Was. She was. Okay. And she came over, the two of you met and started dating and started living together? Pretty much she came over and never left my house. So that part like is said, accurate? <laughs> pretty accurate. Okay. And how would you describe your relationship with her now? It's, it's all right. Um, we have our separate places, though. We don't live together anymore. Mm -hmm. But we have a son and we have another one on the way, so hopefully we can get things worked out. His relatives didn't want us together. They didn't understand the age difference. They were saying, for instance, that when he gets old, he might look different. What and is I might... the age difference? I'm 25 and he's 51, so okay. about that 26 years, you know. It's a little out of the ordinary. <laughs> and so when you were dating, when you started dating, he, you were 23. Correct. Mm -hmm. But obviously, um, you know, our maturity level, you know, I've never pushed a car off a cliff before. You know, I, in fact, I go to college, I do different things. So <laughs> I guess we even out, you know, we, we hit about the same. If I'm about 10 years more mature than I should be and he's a few delinquent, then, uh, you know, we, we add up. I object to that. <laughs> so the two of you started living together and how long did you live together? Uh, for a year and a half. So then. the relationship wasn't working out. Why are you four and a half months pregnant now? Well, you know how that happens. I know how it happened, but I why? mean, there's some things that are still great. Are you working, ma'am? No, I'm a full-time student. How do you support yourself? Financial aid and... Who do you live with? Myself. I have my own apartment. I moved out of Raymond's in January. I lived with my mom until March, and then I was able to get on my own feet by May, and I have my own place now. Okay, and you have sole custody of your one-year-old? I don't. We're actually, we just went to mediation. The child lives with you? 
Charles lives, with, the child's with me. Lives with him. We came up with an agreement. I'm a full-time student. I'm going to get a PhD in psychology, so I got a lot of work ahead of me. Um, the child was with him initially when we first broke up. So and so um, now, sir, your your one year old lives with you full lives time. With me, yes. But I okay. And how long has that been the case? Um, about four months. But I have weekends and Wednesdays, so it's actually three and a half days and three and a half days. So it's even. All right. And how do you support yourself? Um, I'm on uh, social security disability. How long have you been on disability? Um, two years. What's the What's the nature of your disability? Um, I have a leg injury. What did you do before you were on disability? I worked for uh, Budweiser and I worked for the union. Okay, doing what? What kind union. of work? Scaffold. Put and you scaffold. were doing that full time? Doing it full time. For how many years? Um, 15 years. And was this an on the job injury? No, it's, uh, it has something to do with a blood clot in my leg. And Do you have other children? I do. I have a 27 year old daughter. Mm -hmm. I got a 25 year old son, the one that I met her through. Mm -hmm. And I have an 18 year old son. And now I have a 14 year old son, 14 month old son, and one on the way. I'm the only one he has two kids with, though. <laughs> All right, Mitz Lutzweiler, um, <laughs> why don't you tell me about your lawsuit? While I was living at my mom's, I was kind of starting to see somebody else, you know. Um, one day I woke up my, well, actually, the guy that I was kind of seeing, um, my car was a little damaged from Raymond Pryor. He had, like, stabbed the tires, so when you patch it, there's, like, a little thing that sticks out, like you a stab shoelace. stabbed the tires of her car? Absolutely not. Um, he did several times, like 16 tires, um, probably since January up until March. I slashed somebody else's tires in her driveway. Oh, okay. The wrong car. You right. meant to slash her tires. I admit. Why is that, sir? So she couldn't go anywhere. Oh. She wanted me stuck and at the house with the guy, I guess. Why, why is that, sir? You didn't want her to go anywhere because what? Because she wouldn't let me see my kid, and I kept going to her house, and she would be gone. So when I seen, I seen her car there, but it was the wrong car. So... You I was trying to stop her from going anywhere. I wanted to see my son. She had my son for the first eight months. Well, no, when we broke up, she had him for like two months, and I was unable so, to see so him. So you know what most people do when go they say that the th they go to court. That's what they I They don't end up slash doing. tires. I know. You do know that, right? I know that. Okay. Coming up, did the couple's complicated relationship crash into crazy town? Now we've graduated from slashing tires to pushing well, admitted, ca cars over a cliff. Slashing tire. One tire. And you're the only person I know of right now that, well. that's damaged her car in the past. So I'm looking at you right now, Mr. Okay. Vandenberg. Plaintiff Desiree Lutzweiler says her ex drove her car off a cliff. She's suing for the value of a car, new tires, gas, and towing fees. Defendant Raymond Vandenberg says he owes nothing because Desiree has no proof he took her car. He's countersuing for the return of money from an account. Go ahead, ma'am. Well, uh, it, it, I woke up one day. I had squeaky brakes. Like this, he always promised to fix it, never fixed it. So um, I'm laying in bed, I hear you know, I go outside and I see a tail end of my car drive away. So I get on the phone with 911 and I reported it at 8 a.m. At noon, the police gave me a call, said my car had been recovered. From where? Um, a 270 foot canal on Sunrise and Kiefer Boulevard in Sacramento. It had been pushed over a cliff? Correct. The county gates had been cut, the locks, so they'd been on like government property. It's like not even a place for the public at mm -hmm. all. And the car was pushed through. Did you do that, Mr. Vandenberg? No, I didn't, Your Honor. Because now we've graduated from slashing tires to, to, to pushing well, admitted, ca cars over a cliff. slashing tire. One tire. And you're the only person I know of right now that, well. that's damaged her car in the past. So I'm looking at you right now, Mr. <laughs> okay. Vandenberg. Do you have any knowledge whatsoever of what happened, the circumstances around this car being pushed over a cliff, sir? No. It's all speculation. Let me speculation. see the photos, ma'am. Photos are pretty bad. Um, if you see their string or, I'm sure, some type of rope just to hold the car together, they had to reattach the grill. You well, see the it. car is totaled, obviously. What do you think happened, ma'am? Well, uh, judging by the fact that uh, he came by 10 a.m., two hours after my car had been stolen and asked me if maybe I needed a ride and did he want to go have some lunch, did you ask her if she needed a ride true, to lunch? That's not true, She called me about 10 o'clock saying, do I know where her car's at? Right. And I said, I absolutely have no idea where your car's at. I was at the casino. That's It's all speculation. It's because that she's taking money from my account, $800. We're talking about the car. Okay. You're trying to move to the next subject. I'm still on this one. All right. Where were you at the time at 8 a.m. on that day? What day was this? I was at the casino. You were at the casino? Yes. Okay. Was anyone with you? Um, no, I was by myself. Why do you think 
he would take your car and push it over a cliff. Well, I know he took my car because... Why, why do you, what would be the motivation for him doing that? Well, because maybe he was mad I was seeing somebody else. I mean, why did he slash my tires? Were, were, were you dating someone else at the time? Um, yes, I was. Did he, was he aware of that? Yes, he was. Were you aware that she was seeing someone yes. else, sir? I have couples trackers. It's an application you install on a smartphone. It tells you all the phone calls, all the text messages, and the GPS location. You had that on his phone? I yeah. got it on my phone. She had my so phone. you're tracking she... him. That's right. Yeah. So you're not only the baby's mother, you're CSI. <laughs> That's right. CSI, yeah. I'll tell you, hey babe, where are you at? He said, I'm at, I'm at the truck shop getting a part. I said, okay, let that ride because on the computer I see clearly he's at his ex-wife's house. But okay, I let it ride for about six what months. What kind of tracking device is I knew everything serious. he was doing, everything he was doing. I just wanted to see how many times he would lie. That's 1,462nd lie, 1,463rd lie. I, I just want to see how many times he would really lie to well, me. Where, what, well, did you track him the day your car went over the cliff? Oh, all the time. I tracked him 24-7 as long as my eyes were open. Do you know, do you have evidence that he was at your house that day? I have plenty of evidence right here. Coming up on Judge Faith, a smartphone app reveals the rest of the story. 8.35 a.m., you're at that address in Sacramento, California. Is that what it says? Yeah, that's what it <laughs> says. Plaintiff Desiree Lutzweiler says she knows Raymond stole her car because she used GPS to track him. She's suing for the value of a car, new tires, gas, and towing fees. Defendant Raymond Vandenberg says he owes nothing because Desiree is just making a play for his money. He's countersuing for the return of money from an account. That's my mother's address, and um, that's him tracked through his Gmail at 8.35 a.m. So the four places listed, that's the location? Yeah. His location? He picked up the car, he took it to the cliff, he went and got a burger, and he went home. And this is the date of March the... March 17th. Incident. It's all speculation. 8.35 a.m., you're at that address in Sacramento, California. Is that what it says? Yeah, that's what it says. <laughs> I, 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 that's I, I was not there. <laughs> that's what it says. I don't know what phone you're looking at. I'm looking that's at her phone. My, I don't know what phone you're looking at. It's not my this phone. This is online. That shows the whole map, and I'm sure that those coordinates right there must be the cliff. Only a cliff has coordinates. There's no address. <laughs> There, there are coordinates here that just shows because the, because Google Maps is, isn't isn't picking up the exact address, but it is giving the geographical coordinates. And then <laughs> at 5:57 in the afternoon, there's the car's over the cliff. There's some coordinates. It's a dirt field. She's, and a she's a couple of steps ahead of you, is what <laughs> I'm saying. Okay, you come in and, and and it's deny, deny, deny because there's no proof. But, you know, this is a criminal court where it's proof beyond a reasonable doubt. It's just by preponderance of the evidence. And based on what she's <laughs> submitting to me, it exists, and you did this. And the fact that there's a pattern of you slashing tires, no, messing tire, up cars. There's, there's a pattern. You will slash tires when you get upset, when you're not getting your way by your own admission. And then now all of a sudden her car mysteriously goes over a cliff. You can't tell me who else would do it. I had some evidence right here, hard cold evidence. I mean, there's no denying this. I'm just gonna see what he was gonna say first. You know, maybe he c confessed. You know, he owes me that, that and a car and a ride and. <laughs> what is this, an email? This is an email. Here's the email from your email address. Stop calling the police on me. I'm sorry about crashing your car. I took it out of your driveway so you would come and see me. But then I yeah. saw you with that and you got what you deserve. I will no longer ask to see you or my son have fun with what's his name. She created that email. For what reason? She didn't press charges against you. Because I know you were upset with her before. You say it was because she wouldn't let you see her son and you slash tires and now I have a car off of a cliff and you're upset about another guy. What's this about this $800 you want to tell me about, sir? On March 3rd, um, I went to the casino and I went to pull out some money and I had no money on my SSI card. Mm -hmm. And I checked and there was $800 withdrawn. So I called Ms. Les Weiler and I said, where's my money? She said, I transferred it onto another card to save you from spending it all in the casino. So the $800, was that a joint account, ma'am? No, it was not. That was his uh, personal account? Yes, he had asked me to make an online banking for him, um, which I had access to. He put me as a representative payee. So you had access to that account? 
Correct, he gave permission. What happened to, with the $800? Um, I transferred it to a debit card so that he wouldn't have $1,300 on the third, go to the casino, waste it all, and come home and have me have to support him all month. So I gave him the debit card so he could spend the money as long as he wasn't in that out-of-town casino. You took the $800 out of that account, put it on a debit card, and gave him the debit card? Correct, and I am the representative payee, so... In other words, he had access to that $800? Correct. Her position is she didn't take the money, she moved it. You didn't report the money as stolen. When you report it as stolen, holla at me. <laughs> he is a petty, petulant, vindictive 51-year-old child. Coming up, Judge Faith rules. And now, Judge Faith rules. Let me just talk to you for a second, and I want you to hear me out, okay, in this situation. You come into court, and you tell me 16 of your tires have been slashed, four different sets of tires, ma'am, and yet you stand before me four months pregnant by the man you say did it? Right, well, I left him in March, so April, May, June, July, August. I'm 19 weeks today, so I'm almost five months, so it was right prior to me leaving him. And after I left him, that's when he started slashing tires. It all started March 17th and rolled on from there. You just need to think about um, some, of, some of the decisions you're making, ma'am. That's all I'm saying, because right. now, you know, this is, you're in it now, okay? There's no going back. You have two kids. Right. With the defendant who I absolutely believe based on the evidence, push your car over a cliff. Just think about this for a second, okay? 25 years old, you're the mother of his child. This is your only mode of transportation. You're in school and he takes that and destroys it to make your life even more difficult than what it is. There will always be some level of a relationship because he's the father of your children, but otherwise, run. Don't walk, run. <laughs> and try to make a better life for yourself. So here's what we're going to do. You submitted proof that two days before your car was pushed off the cliff, you put four brand new tires. Was it, was it because they were slashed? Correct, 12 hours before. And so I am going to order him to pay for those tires. It cost $227. In addition, your car was total. I'm going to order him to pay for the value of your car in good condition, the blue book value, Juan submitted this to me before court, is $1,081. In addition, I'm going to order him to pay the tow fees. You submitted proof that you paid $240 in tow fees in addition to your court costs. That is a total of $1,548 plus your court costs. You can't allow someone to continue to vandalize your cars and your property. You can't afford it. You can't afford it. You're sharing custody of, of your one-year-old son. You cannot afford it. You're living off the government as it is. The only way, if this continues to happen, the only way it stops is if you press charges. That's the only way. Because this is a pattern of abuse. $1,548 judgment for the plaintiff. Thank you, Donna. Her advice was good, you know. Uh, I've been trying to start those steps myself, getting my own place, actually not keeping a car because I know what's gonna happen to it, and um, potentially keeping a restraining order on file just in case things were to get ugly again. If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story. See you in court.